a clinical trial. Clinical trials evaluate promising new cancer treatments or methods, from radiation and chemotherapy to new surgical techniques. This process helps determine if a new treatment is an improvement over existing treatments. For patient safety, new treatments are developed in phases. Initially, researchers look to find the best way to give the new therapy and see whether the treatment has any harmful effects. A second phase determines the effects of research treatment on various types of cancer. Once researchers are satisfied that the treatment has potential benefit and acceptable risk, they open clinical trials to large numbers of patients for the final test phase. The new therapy is compared directly to existing standard therapy to discover if the new therapy does indeed offer advantages. Patients may have a longer, more active life or experience fewer and milder side effects from their treatment. If trial results warrant, the new treatment becomes standard therapy for all patients. Dr. Stanley Watkins... In practice, there were particular cancer and Hodgkin's disease where our cure rates were very low. As a result of clinical trials that have been going on for the past 20 years, we are now seeing very definite cure rates in these diseases. And the duration of a patient's life, the quality of their life, has changed dramatically as a result of th drugs, therapies, combinations of drugs, surgery, and radiotherapy that have been put together through the use of clinical trials. Doctors carefully screen patients to find out if a clinical trial might be right for them. The medical treatment in clinical trials is given in a very specific manner, according to written instructions and guidelines called a protocol. The protocol is like a recipe to ensure a patient in California receives the same treatment as a patient in New York. I have the chemotherapy once a week and in the doctor's office and um, it's intravenous as well as pills. As it was, I had uh, two or three treatments of a week of injections and then I went to the uh, pump, which was about two months and that was to coincide with the radiation. But since the protocol is written for physicians, your doctor will need to explain the treatment plan so you can decide whether to participate. I felt that his answers were very clear and um, I understood everything I was told and I felt that he was very honest and upfront about the whole situation, which I appreciated. When trials compare different treatments, each patient can receive only one of those treatments. Neither they nor their doctor chooses which treatment group they'll be in. This process, called randomization, ensures different therapies are evaluated fairly. Because there were three different uh, ways of having the chemotherapy. You know, you could have all three drugs or you could have the two drugs. Or, and I was hoping that I would only have to have one drug. <laughs> And so he said, well, of course, and I said, well, did you know which was best? And of course, he said, well, you know, if we knew that, we'd be giving you that. The outcome of a clinical trial cannot be guaranteed. And since the therapies and treatments are new, there is always some risk. When discussing potential benefits, ask your doctor about potential risks of the trial you're considering. Of course, no patient with active cancer ever receives treatment known to be inferior. In fact, all clinical trial patients receive the highest quality medical care with thorough, careful monitoring during the trial. I felt that it's a program that doctors felt was, um, or research program, good enough to try and put on the market because they thought and felt that it would work and, it, and even if it would help a patient live one month longer than what they would without the treatment, it, I, I felt it was important to do. Even with a very clear explanation, patients have many questions about their specific clinical trial. Potential side effects often tops the list. The side effects were all listed on a sheet of paper that my oncologist gave me regarding the treatment. And uh, there were several uh, listed, um, some which sounded very serious. 
when it came to um, you know your physical appearance and your loss of hair and all of this of course I wanted to know is that permanent <laughs> so I went in with the list of questions and among them was uh, which side effects were more common uh, with the treatment and he broke that out for me and explained we went through each uh, side effect and and he told me which one was most prevalent they're not saying that these are the things that will happen these are the things that may happen so that you can be prepared for it if it does patients also want to know how the therapy may affect daily life my doctor was surprised really surprised that I worked as much as I did because he would say are you still working do you think you have to go half a day and I'd say no I'm, I'm doing just fine if I can get that Monday off after my weekend treatment I'm fine like Diane you might make a list of questions about your specific situation I think a patient needs to make a list of any questions uh, they might have and when they go in to see the doctor have him list out the options and the different choices that they might have and the pros and cons of uh, each treatment and then I would say go from there to decide which you feel would be best for them since clinical trials involve a new cancer therapy some patients may fear the research process I didn't feel like a guinea pig um, I didn't look at it that way uh, I looked at my options and I feel that was my best option no, I don't think I really, I felt like a guinea pig. I just felt that it was an opportunity to uh, maybe uh, pro, uh, get rid of any chances of it coming back, which is really the purpose of it. From start to finish, each patient's best interest remains paramount. Whenever a patient's cancer fails to respond to therapy, the protocol treatment is stopped so other treatment options can be pursued for that patient. In addition, Every patient has the right to withdraw voluntarily from a trial at any time. Another consideration, how much will the experimental treatment cost and is it covered by insurance? I have uh, Medicare, which picks up 80%, and the private carrier in, in all the cases so far has picked up the remaining 20%. So, uh, so far it's worked pretty good. Well, I was kind of worried about it because our insurance is not all-inclusive, you know, it doesn't pay for everything. Since every trial is different and insurance policies vary, be certain to discuss cost and reimbursement with both your doctor and insurance company. To enter a clinical trial, you must sign an informed consent statement. This statement means you understand what treatments you may receive, possible side effects, your responsibility and possible outcomes. So before signing the statement, be sure to learn all you can about the study. To help you make a decision, the National Cancer Institute offers publications explaining your disease as well as clinical trials. To receive such information, simply dial 1-800-4-CANCER. In the final analysis, Participating in a clinical trial means becoming a vital part of a research team that includes your own doctor. Depending on the type of therapy, that team may also include other surgeons, medical oncologists, radiation oncologists, nurses and researchers working in close cooperation. Equally important, family and friends become part of an emotional support system.